So anthills a key component for many systems, such as the, um, the meadow you can see behind me. And you get yellow meadow ants where you have old meadows. But can we create anthills? I'm here with Tim Holtz-Wilson, uh, who's been trying to do so. So, um, so what have you been trying to do, Tim? Well, um, a few years ago, I realised that I could actually engender anthills. Um, basically, if you... Um, if you find where there's an incipient ant mound in the grass, you can put um, a plant pot on top of it. And here's an example you can see. And um, when uh, you have to put a, a peel of rock on it to stop things knocking it over like rabbits, what happens is the ants mm. will earth up in the warmth of the, um, of the black pot, plant pot. And then uh, you take it off. Uh, you, you take the plant pot off after a few weeks and uh, you then um, let it, the hill subside, grass will grow up a bit, then you put the plant pot back on and the um, ants will earth up a bit more, then you uh, remove it, let the grass grow up and so forth. And after about three or four removals, they get the idea and they start basically, they start um, building the ant hill for Syria. So, um, so here's one you started earlier. This yes, is, this this is, is done I, some time ago. So tell started, me about this started earlier and you can see that the, um, the mounding up has been uh, going on at some considerable time. Um, I expect when we look here even more closely we'll probably see some yellow meadow ants at some stage, but maybe not. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, uh, the, it, the process is sort of um, self-replicating um, uh, in the sense that um, they, they, take, they, they take over and set, set to work building the ant mound and they tend to propagate it in a southern direction. Um, you've got to keep it in the, you've got to make sure they're in the sunlight um, otherwise they don't get the warmth that they need. But um, so I might have to cut away some branches of the overhanging oak tree here. Uh, but uh, yeah I think there are yellow meadow ant uh, is a well-known um, creator of mounds. And, and these, these mounds I know could be very diverse can't they? There's, there's bare ground, there's a different sort of soil and at Fulton Common, we looked for rare spring sedge, and almost all of those were on these meadow, uh, on these mounds. Well, and often for sort of butterflies, mm. grasshoppers, all sorts of things seem to like there's, this there's habitat. Good, there's good work being done on the biodiversity of the mounds, particularly down in, I think, in the, in the Salisbury Plain in Wiltshire, where they've shown that you have um, the sort of micro habitat um, is it can be exploited by a slightly different range of plants. Um, I haven't myself noticed anything particularly uh, singular about the floral assemblage on these okay. ones because I guess it's just what happens to be in my garden. Um, but um, yeah, they were certainly, uh, they had a bit of a vertical feature to, to my uh, garden. There's another one here which actually, I think the, um, the, the, that is the woodpecker who's been having a go at that. Oh, the green woodpecker coming in. And oh, yes, green woodpeckers here, are famous for feeding see, on ants, aren't they? You can see the remnant of the old um, plant pot can you see that? That's oh, yeah, that's the, right. that's oh, yeah, the yeah, old that's plant right. pot that was. Huh. And oh, there's a yellow meadow that. ant as well. So they all come. They they love love. Um, oh yes, you can see them being there, in yes. being in that plant pot. It's yeah. a sort of castle for them. Um, anyway, I should put that back. So, so so what I guess this shows is that um, um, ant hills are sort of key parts of old meadow communities, and that you can create them, which uh, for me is a new technique. So. So um, a great idea, and uh, and thanks for thanks for showing it to us. Not at all, pleasure.